Hey everybody, and welcome back to Submarine History. It's been a while. I, uh, I had to take a month off to study for the FCC General Amateur Radio License Test, which I passed, <clears throat> but then we had a trip down to the Carolinas for a vacation, so I've been kind of unavailable. But I'm back in business now, and today something a little different and maybe even whimsical. We're going to talk about U-boat emblems. We'll talk about the, the backstory as to how they came into existence, show you some examples, and then we'll have a World of Warships tie-in at the end of the brief. If you have any interest at all in submarines, you likely know what this picture represents. It's the studio mock-up of the conning tower of the U-96, which was the subject of the book and movie Das Boot. You know this because of the laughing swordfish painted on the side of the bridge. This stage prop resides on the campus of Bavaria Studios in uh, Munich, by the way. So why is that caricature on there? First things first. Thank you to the United States Naval Institute for doing the work they do to preserve naval history from around the world. Consider supporting USNI with a membership so they may continue their mission long into the future. I do have a Discord. Uh, you should be able to grab a server invite from the link that's embedded in the banner for this channel. Our references for today, pretty short list. Um, the U-Boat Emblems book by Georg Hogel, uh, that's a treasure. If you're really interested in the subject and you can find this book out there in the used book market, definitely grab it. Uh, it's a lot more than just a reference book on emblems. One of the chapters in uh, U-Boat Adventures uh, by Melanie Wiggins uh, actually is about Hogel uh, when he served on the U-30 and the U-110. Today, uh, Georg's granddaughter runs a website devoted to his life and art, uh, and you should visit it. I actually own one of his uh, watercolors. Read the description to this video if you can. Uh, there are informative links, and if you have questions, please feel free to post them below in the comments. Especially if you come across a U-boat emblem on the internet that you don't know. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'll do this. If you can get me a picture, I'll try to research it, and I'll answer you with a YouTube short on this channel. Finally, and as always, uh, feel free to stop the briefing at any time to study a slide. So the story of U-Boat Emblems starts with U-Boat Captain Fritz Julius Lemp. It includes radio operator Georg Hogel and Lemp's pet dog, Schnurzel. Now, before the war started, it was common for U-Boats to have their hull number displayed on the side of the conning tower. At the start of the war, this practice was ended and hull numbers were painted over to make espionage harder. So here we have uh, Fritz Julius Lemp. He was one of the old guard, uh, having come from Crew 31, and uh, he was very successful as a U-boat captain. Between the U-30 and the U-110, he sank 19 merchant ships for 96,314 tons. Um, he is also arguably one of the most tragic U-boat captains, uh, and there were a lot of tragic U-boat captains during the, during the war. Um, just hours after Britain declared war on Germany, he mistakenly sinks the uh, Athenia, a passenger ship, that resulted in 112 deaths, um, and this was covered up until the end of the war, actually till, the, till, till after the war. Um, as captain of the U-110, his boat would be captured during its second war patrol where its Enigma machine, cipher sheets, and other assorted cipher code papers were captured by the British. Lemp would die during that battle with the British, uh, where at first he would abandon ship with the crew of his boat, uh, but then he was lost when he tried to return to the boat for unknown reasons. But let's back up to uh, Lemp's first war patrol in the U-30. As the boat was returning from its first war patrol, Lemp approaches Hogel, uh, one of his boat's radio operators, and asks if he could paint a picture of his dog Schnurzel on the side of the conning tower. Hogel had trained as an artist before the war, and Lemp knew this. Hogel, to his credit, comes up with a series of sketches that he shows to Lemp, and this is what Lemp picks. Hogel, by the way, is not a trivial character as it relates to U-boats. He throws himself into his art during his captivity, having survived the U-110 sinking, and after the war donated over 300 of those artworks to the Thunder Bay Military Museum in Thunder Bay, Canada. After the war, he wrote his own book about U-boat emblems, was mentioned in Showell's book Enigma U-Boats, and was interviewed in several documentaries about the Battle of the Atlantic. And this is what it looked like uh, on the side of the conning tower. I think, it, I think it suits. It's pretty cool. So they get back to port after the first war patrol, and a couple things happen. First, 
Dunitz, he approves of the emblem, but also says it has to come down because it identifies the U-boat. Uh, the other thing that happens is that every other U-boat sailor in port sees the emblem, and all of a sudden, emblems start getting slapped up on just about every U-boat. And this ends up being one of those times when you have to, quote, pick your battles. And uh, Dunitz ends up turning a blind eye to the whole situation because, you know, in the end, it helped morale. And uh, over, the, over the next couple slides here, we'll just show a couple uh, examples of how of, of emblems and, and how they were employed and stuff. Um, but on this slide here, we have a couple of the more famous U-boat emblems that were used during the war. The Snorting Bull uh, of Preen, uh, the Laughing Sword Fish uh, of Will Willembrock, uh, the Running Devil uh, from Eric Topps boat, the U-552, and then the Edelweiss boat, U-124, uh, Willem Schultz. So in addition to emblems on the side of a conning tower that were put there because the captain liked it, or maybe the captain and the crew together selected it, uh, in addition to having those emblems, you could have some other emblems on your U-boat. Um, and on this slide, we kind of see how they, they're kind of distinct. Uh, we have the Lucky Horseshoe, which was the emblem for the U-99 that was uh, Otto Kretschmer. To the right is the Victory Rune. Uh, this was initially the emblem on the U-103 that was Victor Schutz. After he gets promoted to uh, Flotilla Command, he decides that his personal uh, emblem, this victory rune, is going to go on the conning tower of every U-boat that's part of his flotilla. So you could have a personal emblem on your U-boat conning tower, and then you could have the emblem for your flotilla. In addition to that, um, each crew that uh, went into Merv Mervic had their own symbol. And in the lower right-hand corner, we'll see the Olympic uh, emblem for the crew of, of 1936. And remember, uh, with Mervic, your class year is the year you enter Mervic, not the year that you graduate, like what we would do in the United States. And then finally, um, you could also have a sponsor for your U boat, and that could be something, you know, that could be a province or that could be a city. In this case, on here, we're showing the coat of arms of Hamburg. Um, so you could potentially have up to four emblems on your U-boat. I don't know if that actually happens, but there's certainly lots of cases where there are at least two. This is one example. Uh, this is a little different. This is the U-124. Originally, under the command of uh, Schultz, uh, the crew adopted the Edelweiss flower as their emblem. We'll talk about that another time, why they selected it. Um, now, at the time that they selected the Edelweiss, um, Moore was the executive officer of the boat. Eventually, Moore assumes command of the U-124, and when he does, he adds his own personal uh, emblem to the conning tower. And if you look real close, you'll see uh, on the right side, on, on the port side, uh, you'll see the Edelweiss, and then on the front of the conning tower, you'll actually see that green frog. So that would be, uh, in studying these pictures, that's a way you can, you can possibly identify which boat and at what time, um, you know, who, who the captain was and stuff, just by looking at the emblems. Here's the U-505 uh, in Chicago at the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, there's the scallop shell, which was Harold Long's personal emblem, and then the victory room, the uh, emblem for the second U-boat uh, flotilla. On this slide, uh, this is the U-995, and we have a couple pictures on the left. You can clearly see the Olympic emblem for the crew of 36, and then also uh, the Viking emblem denoting the 13th U-boat uh, flotilla. As the boat is preserved today, um, they have the uh, Capture the Hat emblem, uh, which was put on there when Hans Georg Hess was captain. And I think that's really cool. I like that a lot. And then finally here, just to wrap it up, this is from uh, World of Warships. Uh, this is the U-190. We've talked about it before. Uh, but you can clearly see on the side of the Connie Tower uh, the Star of Rio, uh, which was the logo uh, that was adopted by uh, Wintermeyer when he was captain of the boat. Uh, you'll notice that the U-190 is also painted on the side of the Connie Tower. The, uh, the configuration of this boat uh, and its camouflage 
uh, from World of Warships are what was on the boat at the time it was sunk by the Canadians as a uh, as a target. So that high that high visibility paint job, that yellow and red, um, that was done by the Canadians, and they actually put the U one ninety numbering on the hull. So that was it for today. Uh, I hope you find that interesting that you learned a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, please post them below. And until uh, next time, peace out. <laughs>